Welcome to Live United. My name is Karen Knapp, President, CEO, United Way of St. Lucie County. Right now, we have campaigns in the workplace that are being conducted by our wonderful United Way staff and many volunteers throughout the community. We'd like to thank those volunteers and all the donors who have contributed so far to United Way. Uh, this show is uh, basically to uh, give you a little insight on where the dollars go and what United Way really does in the community. Today we have with us one of the United Way's fine staff members, Jessica Parrish. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Today we're here to talk about Volunteer Tax Assistance Program, yes. and we call it VITA for mm -hmm. short. Um, many people, uh, they do their own taxes, but there are so many in the community who cannot do that, mm -hmm. or um, if they do, they, they don't know the tax uh, um, benefits that Correct. are out there for them. Um, so let's talk a little bit about why United Way is involved with, <laughs> you could tell me, your boss, why United <laughs> Way is involved in the uh, tax assistance program. And um, then we'll tell the viewing audience a little bit more about where they can get their taxes done. Okay. So as you know, United Way has three focus areas, education, financial stability, and health. And this aligns perfectly with financial sp stability by providing discretionary cash to mm -hmm. residents to be able to spend or to save for future emergencies under financial stability. Mm -hmm. So it aligns perfectly with our, our focus areas for United Way. Right, right, mm -hmm. because we know that uh, there are many people out there who work yes. and sometimes work two jobs mm -hmm. and they have a spouse that might work one or two jobs right. and they're just barely getting by. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I know we're, as we talk, yeah. we'll tell our viewing audience that's why United Way really is involved uh, in that area mm -hmm. uh, and then they find it so important throughout the nation uh, to support those individuals. Right. We call them the Alice folks. Exactly. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about United Way doesn't do what we do by ourselves. We, I mean, no. we have a small staff and we have many volunteers, mm -hmm. but we have many community partners. We do. School districts, one mm -hmm. of them, but St. Lucie County admin, uh, Community Services is another. Um, so let's talk about the partners that are involved in this tax assistant program. So United Way. as a collaborative, there are several different partners working on the VITA program. We have the City of Port St. Lucie, Mustard Seed Ministries, of course, St. Lucie County Community Services, Indian River State College, many different partners working together. Um, AARP also has VITA sites throughout the community as well. So together, we're pulling together all of our resources to put this program forward. And I know one of the things that's very important is recruiting volunteers. Mm -hmm. Now, I know recently we um, had some, well, quite a bit of support from FPUA mm -hmm. um, who uh, put notices in the bills. Yes. So people were made aware of the services. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, sites that are available and some of the volunteers that um, okay. you encounter as well. Yep, so we have been recruiting volunteers for many different positions at the VITA site. So you don't necessarily have to volunteer to prepare taxes if you're not comfortable. We do accept greeters, so we need greeters on the site to take in information from the people that are showing up and passing it on to the preparers as it comes. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we need preparers. Basic level preparers, it doesn't have to be rocket science. If you do it at home, you're more than capable of preparing it in the sites. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also are recruiting for advanced tax preparers. Those are the ones that we can look at to run a site for us through the tax season. Um, there are several training opportunities. All of our tax preparers are trained by the IRS. They do go through an IRS certified training. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not just pulled off the street to prepare taxes for the residents. They are certified by the IRS through the training process. Um, but this upcoming tax season, we have five different sites that'll be opening and they all open that first week in February on different dates. Um, but we have Mustard Seed Ministries has a site in their Fort Pierce thrift store. Mustard Seed also has a site in their Port St. Lucie thrift store. Um, we have a site at the Port St. Lucie Community Center right there on Oroso and Port St. Lucie Boulevard. United Against Poverty has a site. They're located on the corner of Orange Avenue and 25th Street. And then Indian River State College has a site that's manned actually by accounting students for the tax season. 
And with all the changes in the tax laws, and especially one coming up soon, uh, let's talk about how our tax preparers are trained. And that, and that training is coming up next week, right? It, the actual in-person training is this week. This week. Okay. Yeah, this week. Um, IRS is here in town training all of our volunteers. It's a rigorous training, five days, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. straight on taxes. <laughs> So they're getting a pretty hefty training and then they have an exam that they have to pass on Friday in order to be a preparer on site. There's also the option for those that cannot make the in-person class mm -hmm. to do an online training. Um, that we're holding a training on how to access and utilize the online system called Link and Learn on January 16th at Port St. Lucie, I mean the St. Lucie County Community Services Office. So we have several different options, and that also requires an exam at the end to pass for certification. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about who's eligible for assistance. Mm -hmm. Yep, so anybody in the community that makes less than $54,000 a year mm -hmm. as a household is eligible for assistance through this tax program. And how many, are, how many of those people are really? That's um, a majority of our population. Yes, it yes. is. It is quite, quite a bit, and those are, uh, individuals and families Correct. so yep. um, when they when they do come uh, to the site what do they bring with them so there's several documents that they will have to bring and depending on their tax case it could vary on the documents that need to be brought but just basically you need your proof of ID so your driver's license mm -hmm. or ID card um, so security cards for you and your family um, your tax statements from your employer if you are employed or any other statements that you may have. Mm -hmm. Your bank account number, so they do e-file and it's automatically transferred into your bank account, so you will need your bank account and your routing number and that type of information. Mm -hmm. So depending if your case is different, if you own a house, you'll need to bring certain documents as compared to if you rent, things like that. So it's also case by case, but they can all call 211 to get information on sites, locations, operations and then also what to bring to the sites with them. So when can you uh, go to a site and mm -hmm. get your taxes done? All of our sites open the first week in February so the earliest one that opens will be the one at Indian River State College. They actually open February 1st. Um, Mustard Seed in Fort Pierce will open February 6th. Mustard Seed in Port St. Lucie is February 5th. Um, Port St. Lucie Community Center is February 5th as well, and then United Against Poverty actually opens on February 10th. So do they call for an appointment, or mm -hmm. do they just come in? They just Wait come and walk first in. come, first serve? Yes. Yep. That's why our greeter position is so imperative, <laughs> because it is walk-ins only. <laughs> yeah. We also partner with BB&T Bank, mm -hmm. and, and that started last year, yes. and it's a wonderful partnership. Let's talk a little bit about that. So last year, we were approached by BB&T Bank to have access to a BB&T bus that's actually outfitted with laptops, printers, and anything you need to put on a VitaTax mobile site, essentially. So that was positioned at the Caribbean American Club last year, and we had certified preparers on the bus preparing taxes for anyone that was able to walk up and show up. Um, this year, we're looking at possibly two dates to have access to the BB&T bus in the mid middle of April, mm -hmm. and the location of where it's stationed this year is to be determined depending on which date or, or both dates if we have access to it. So we, we also do, uh, I don't know if BB&T Bank also does uh, training on improving your credit. They do. Is that true? Yep. Last year when we had the bus stationed at Caribbean American Club, they also had informational sessions being put on while the people waited to have their taxes prepared on mm -hmm. how to improve their credit, what to look out for, and things like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the sites that are available, uh, do you want to repeat those one more time? Sure. I know we're going to have them on our website. Mm -hmm. Yep. The flyer with all the sites, opening times, and how to contact them is on our website. But we have five sites going on this year, um, Mustard Seed, both in Fort Pierce and in Port St. Lucie at their thrift stores, the Port St. Lucie Community Center, mm -hmm. um, United Against Poverty, and Indian River State College. 
thanks for all that information. <laughs> uh, we have another program that I, I would like to really talk about, and yeah. that's our Tools for Schools program. Mm -hmm. Um, Unite Away funds many programs, but we also run programs as well, and we do a lot of initiatives and collaboratives in the community. So this is one of the United Way programs. Mm -hmm. It used to be called School Supplies, yes. but now we're calling it Tools for Schools. And how many kids have we supplied uh, with us? school supplies the first day of school how many kids so the program's been in existence about 21 22 years right. and over that time span it's been about 65,000 students receive school supplies for the first day of school and that's thanks to the generosity mm -hmm. of all the people who gave money to United Way yes. and supplies mm -hmm. um, there, there are gonna be opportunities for people to give this coming Correct. this year as well yes let's talk about how they can help Yep, so we also, during the summer, come about May to July, we conduct um, drives within organizations. So certain organizations will reach out to to sponsor a drive within their business or um, community also. And then we also have our Stuff the Bus event, which is usually the third week in July, where we're out at all the different Walmarts collecting supplies and passing out lists of items that are needed for the students within the school year. So there are several opportunities to donate supplies. Right, and also Publix, who's a great mm -hmm. partner to United Way, yes. um, they also do uh, a drive at the register. Mm -hmm. They do. Um, it's called Cool Tools for Schools, where they collect money to purchase school supplies for the program, and we are one of the recipients of all those supplies. And how many pallets did we receive? I, so mean, I mean, over the past two years, how many pallets? Over the past two years, we've received 100 pallets. From from the from public yeah. due to that drive specifically yes oh, so they're a huge sponsor and how does a, a a family find out if they're eligible for this program so you, know you have something new coming up we do we do so right now we're looking at piloting an online teacher store where teachers can go on and personally select the supplies that are needed for their classrooms so if a student is in the classroom and they're missing necessary items like crayons and pencils, the teacher is capable of providing that to them without taking the money out of their own pocket. So right then and there in the classroom, the teacher will be able to see who needs access to certain supplies and be able to provide it to them. Um, typically, the parent can contact the guidance department and the guidance counselors will reach out to us for support on school supplies as well. And we have a partnership with the Education Foundation. Yes, we do. Education Foundation is our partner in this new pilot project of a teacher resource store. So. It's going to be very exciting. We start the pilot, actually this week, we start training the pilot schools on the online system, what it looks like and how to access everything. And so then what's your vision for the future with this? I would love to get a physical retail store where teachers can actually come in and shop for the supplies at no cost to them. Um, so we're yeah. looking for free space somewhere, right? Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Well, I want to thank you for all that you do for United Way. Oh, thank you. And it was nice visiting with you right now. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together as one will start to see some change. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Welcome back to Live United. Our guests now are from Grace Way Village here in St. Lucie County. Welcome. It's wonderful to be here. Hi. Kathy, Chris, thank you very much for being here. Kathy, you're the executive director, so we'll, we'll talk to you first. <laughs> about the mission and purpose of Graceway Village. And I know a lot of people know about it, but there might be a few that don't. But you do a lot for the families and children in St. Lucie County. We do. That's definitely our primary focus, meeting the needs of the families in crisis in St. Lucie County. Um, through whether it's through a food program, which is called Matthew's Cafe, or a clothing program, which is Hope's Closet, and then moving forward into transitional living. And uh, how long have you been in existence here in St. Lucie County? Do you we know? Are, we are eight years old. Eight years mm -hmm. old. Wow. Yeah. And I can see you, you know, being here for another 80 years. You know, it's, it's, the need is always there. Absolutely. Um, 
recently we talked about Hope's Closet, mm -hmm. and let's tell the viewing audience what exactly you do at Hope's Closet and some of the changes that you're making. Hope's Closet was one. I, I think they're improvements. Yeah. Absolutely, um, it was one of our. It's our first program that started eight years ago, and it's to clothe children who are living in crisis. We work with over a hundred different referring agencies and agents in St. Lucie County. When a child's in need of clothing and the finances just are not there without putting the family at a very difficult position of choices, they can come in, they can get a, a voucher from a referring agent, and they can come in and shop. And each child leaves with 14 to 18 very nice items. They're definitely school appropriate. I, we did not realize until we opened up how important the appropriate clothing was that tru truancy was very high for children in poverty because they just did not have the dress code compliant clothing. Mm -hmm. So we we are excited about the program. Um, we're clothing probably close to 4,000 children this year. Um, greatly in need. All the foster children, um, when they get placed, they, they receive a voucher. The parents do so as foster parents so they can come in. So how many agencies help. give out your vouchers? Oh my goodness, right now we have, there's the uh, Mustard Seed, um, Salvation Army, and the United Against Poverty are the three main ones for individuals who just walk in looking for it. But all the public school systems, all the social service agencies, um, you, you name it, over 100. So if you give out clothing, you need to receive clothing, right? And what we are do. you looking for? We are looking for children and teen clothing um, through the age of uh, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an abundance at this point in time, except for we're very short of boys. Boys' clothing are All very, time, very difficult. Like. Yeah. They're really hard on their clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also need skinny jeans for girls. Uh, we have a lot of jeans, but we cannot give them away to the teenage girls because it's just to them, it labels them as poor. They won't even touch it. Mm -hmm. So we're desperate for skinny jeans and shoes for, for all children and teens as well. You know, and there's such a demand on children um, in the, in, well, throughout the day, yeah. um, wherever they are, are involved, uh, to look appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so I really don't blame them. So that's really nice. Many times, you know, families, the kids outgrow their jeans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this would be a great opportunity to give mm -hmm. them and make the most use out of the money you spend, right? Absolutely. Very expensive. What are the changes that you're, that you're now having at Hope's Closet? Well, the first change we implemented at the beginning of 2017, and that was when the family comes in for the first visit, it's wonderful. There's no expectations mm -hmm. or requirements. But to come back, they need to attend. Um, at that point, it was two workshops in a six-month period before they could come sh shop again. And the workshops we've coordinated with all the different nonprofits in our area, these workshops constitute an hour of their time. They all have to do with life-building skills. Our goal is to just help motivate them to grow in their life skills, to help them step out of the situation that they're in. And so we're real excited about that. Um, and to assist them, we've also partnered with Parent Academy, as well as we have a number of professionals who come in on Wednesdays, and they host workshops right on site. Yeah, I saw that. I saw your advertisement. Uh, you know, you're partnering with Parent Academy. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? What's the topic there? Uh, those have to do with parenting <coughs> skills and tutoring skills for children with their education. And we have financial workshops as well um, from a recently retired individual from Seacoast Bank that have been well received and then they can stay for free lunch and quite often they can then shop immediately once they make that requirement. The other most recent change just occurred this January and that is instead of coming every six months they now can come every four months instead of every six months and so we've changed the requirements so it's one workshop in a four-month period. It's a very easy one to make mm -hmm. while at the same time growing them as they are blessed with some additional clothing that they need. Right, and they can find out where there are other resources in the community as well, right? Absolutely. We have, there's a large list online as well as we give to them every time. And then on top of that, we've increased our hours. Um, it was 10 to 5, and now it's 10 to 5.30, and it seems like a very small change. But the reason we made that change, it's very difficult for teenagers to get in. By the time the buses drop them off, they have to basically be at, a, at our facility, at Hope's Closet, by 4.15 in order to have the time to shop and they just have not been able to do that. So we want to make it as accessible as possible for the teens because for some reason they just do not like what their mothers choose for them. <laughs> and you also provide um, hot meals, Matthew's Cafe. Yes, 
Absolutely. Do board members get involved with that, with we the do. serving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the board members enjoy serving the population and getting involved in you know, a number of different ways. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. Uh, the hours of Matthew's Cafe? It's every Wednesday we have a, a, a light lunch available to the public from okay. 12 to 1. And then every Sunday, which is where, really where the main focus is, there's a hot meal with a fresh um, salad buffet from 5 until 6. And we also deliver 60 hot meals to seniors and disabled living in public housing. And, 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 you know, we were talking earlier about mm -hmm. that. There's a waiting list, correct? Yes, there is. Yeah. There's a waiting list. The so, need is that great. Are you looking for um, donations there? I mean, besides monetary donations, are you looking for any type of um, food donations? or? Actually, actually, we're consistently looking for food donations, especially to stock our pantry. When our guests are finished eating, they can go into a pantry and we, they each leave with one to two bags of non-perishable items to help, help sustain them. So if we have sufficient, we also deliver some of these items to the, the seniors that we deliver meals to. And your, your new uh, focus is on mm -hmm. transitional living, and yes. I know that's why you brought your board chair. Mm -hmm. yes. I know if you're not board yeah. chair now, you were at one time, Chris. Yes. Yes. We won't yeah. let him go. Yeah, they, they won't let <laughs> get off that easy yet. Well, let's talk so. about the need so. for this transitional living site um, at Graceway Village. Well, the need is great. You know, we, we just uh, had another meeting here where we had uh, discussed the number of registered students, which is somewhere around 1,500 registered mm -hmm. students in St. Lucie County. And those are the, the ones who are registered in the system as, as homeless. It doesn't account for the ones who don't register. So we know that the need is greater than 1,500. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, what we've seen throughout our community is that a large part of our community doesn't understand the need. So we've been trying to educate through the town hall meetings. We do have another one coming up on the 30th of January where we can get uh, cooperation from the community but also educate on the need. Um, and so we're, we are ultra-focused on, on the transitional living facility to meet the need of our homeless uh, in the community, and, and we're excited about it. We've made a lot of progress. Our business plan's almost complete. Uh, we, we're targeting the 30th as well uh, to have our business plan complete. We've, uh, we've timelined our funding needs, so you know, we're, we're really making a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. and, you know, talking about the needs, you know, the numbers of the kids in school, you know, that's just touching the surface, as we know. Yeah. Um, but you're doing more than just sheltering. I mean, this is going to be a very comprehensive type of living facility. Do you want to start talk more in detail about that? Yeah, if you, if you would, Kathy. Absolutely. The, the difference between a shelter and a transitional is a transitional works with the family in its entirety in all areas so that by the end of their time with us, they will be leaving as a healthy family unit that is also self-sustaining. So we're going to address not only the areas that have really hindered their financial success, self-sustaining, self-sustainability, I guess is a good term. Um, we'll address all of those partnering with the different agencies in our area as well. But we'll also be working with habits, lifestyle choices, um, marital situations, parenting skills, pretty much you name it, we're gonna be compiling a very precise case plan for each of the families and working with not only the adults, but also with the children. So when they leave, they have the greatest chance of success in all areas. You know, believe it or not, there are people who want to remain homeless. There's a small, right. You know, but there are others who want to get out of their situation. They want to improve their lives, but they just need that hand up. And that's why Graceway Village is there to help them so they can do just that. So you've encountered families personally as they come to Matthew's Cafe, and you've seen a lot of need that's out there firsthand. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to talk a little bit about that or do you want to go more into your um, transitional program? It, it kind of goes both it, ways. I mean, the, the, the stories impact you very hard because they're right in front of you and you see the children and you hear the dynamics and the difficulties that they've had and how they're having to live. It, it, as cold as it's been, it just breaks our heart. I mean, we've been, we, exactly. leave, we leave boxes out with big signs on the street saying free blankets just to help those just get through the night with some semblance of warmth as they are parked in their car in a parking lot. And that's where the families are. The families are not in the camps. Mm -hmm. The families are in the parking lots late at night and in neighbors' driveways and whatnot. And they literally are living in their cars. Um, we see them every day. And as you get go, going with this project, the beginning, you're going to need monetary donations. And so one of the reasons why I know that you're 
preparing the business plan is so mm -hmm. some of those uh, donors, as small or large, That's right. <laughs> uh, will focus on, and, and, and actually, uh, there are many people out there who say, this is what I want to focus on, but when they, and then when they see you and your plans and, you know, how important it is to our community, um, they're going to be very interested in that. So you're always looking Good. for yes. those individuals, right? That's Absolutely. Right. And in order to really sustain your programs you have now, you have fundraisers. You have a fundraiser mm -hmm. coming up in February? We do. It's the Butterfly Kisses, and it's, I believe it's our fourth, um, possibly our fifth year with the father-daughter dance at the beautiful Pelican Yacht Club. It's really kind of become a staple in St. Lucie County, particularly Fort Pierce. I know Chris will be there with his yeah. little beauty. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful event. They can find more information out if they go to our website at gracewayvillage.com. Right. Yeah. And you're always looking for volunteers. Like we were just talking about your feeding site. Um, you know, you look at... Um, uh, you know, your clothing program, mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, a program that requires a lot of backroom volunteers. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of those opportunities? Yes. Um, in the clothing program, our sorting room, because of the generosity of our wonderful community, our sorting room is in dire need of groups to come in and sort through it. And, and, and when could they do that? In they can come any Wednesday between 9.30 and 5 o'clock. Any Wednesday. Any Wednesday. What about all these teenage open. kids who need volunteer time? They can give us a call and we will <laughs> make specific hours just for them, make sure that we have somebody in the office where they can put on some music and sort with some friends. At what age do you begin um, or allow volunteers? In the clothing section, they can come in at 13. They can come a little bit younger if they have their mom. Otherwise, they need to be 13 to come on their own. Oh, so 13, they don't need a parent. Not for their sorting. Yeah, I think Absolutely that's, not. you know, I should bring out more with our funded partners, the opportunities uh, for volunteering for teenagers, mm -hmm. because as you know, they're, they're really focusing on that in the high schools. Um, and so it, it's very much. we can help them out, right? We can help them out in so many. We get a lot of phone calls, actually, and, and we utilize, actually, the majority of our teen volunteers tend to work in the food Matthew's Cafe um, area because it's convenient. It's on a Sunday. It's not during school hours and whatnot. And it's really good for these teenagers to come in and serve. Right. You mentioned town hall meeting. There's a, there's one more. Well, there's the next one. The next I shouldn't one. say one yeah. more. That's the right. next one coming right. up is when? It would be Tuesday, January 30th. Is it 6 p.m.? At 6.30 p.m. 6.30. And, um, at Grace Boy Village, which is 1780 Hartman Road in Fort Pierce. It's open to the community. What I'm very, very clear in saying, this is not Grace Bay Village's problem. This is St. Lucie County's problem. Right. And so we need the community to come together and find out about it and ask us questions and offer their, their investment of time and skills and resources and knowledge because we can do this. And you have a, a website, right? We do have a website. Again, it's gracewayvillage.com. Right. So anything else? We have one minute left. Is there anything else we might have forgot or... Just well, you know, one of the things that I'm coordinating starting off in 2018 is we're going to start doing home gatherings. And what I'm saying by that is if, you have, if you're interested in this and you want to host a gathering of your friends at your home, I will come and I will present all that we offer, and particularly the transitional as well, to give them a chance to ask their questions and become in a smaller environment, more vested in it. Um, and join us in this right, as a so community instead of a, Or maybe along with the Tupperware party, they could have <laughs> Kathy, right? That's right. No, I think absolutely. it's a great idea. I think mm -hmm. that's some things that are already going on, and, and you can step in and, and share. And there are many women out there who are looking, or many, everyone's looking for places to volunteer. So... Um, pretty ingenious there, Kathy. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I want to thank you both for joining us. Thank I know you. we had a short time and there's more, so we encourage everyone to go to your town hall meeting, right? Absolutely. And so we want to thank you for joining us. And if you want to learn more about United Way funded partners, just go to our website or call us at 464 5300.